Okay, so now we're gonna be entering the month in type of uh, bills that we're gonna pay at the end of the month. But this time, instead of using a check form, we're gonna use the bill form. So let's recap the process on like our flow chart. So we're in the, like the vendor cycle up here in the vendor cycle at the end of the process, at the end of the cycle, we expect cash to be going down uh, in some way, shape or form. Now the easiest way to do that, and many small businesses will do it the easy way, is that we can just use electronic transfers, for example, to pay bills automatically, possibly the phone bill, the utility bill and whatnot, in which case we're using a check form or an expense type of form, a form that's gonna be decreasing the checking account. And we might set up say bank feeds in order to automate that process. That's one of the easiest things to automate. And so that if that's the system we have, that is great. Another system we might be using, which is one that's not dependent on the bank, but is still like a cash based system is that we just write the check. So if we write and send the check, then we want to enter the check into the system when we write it, not wait for it to clear the bank because we have that outstanding check kind of thing happening. We want to be able to see if there's a question whether or not we wrote the check and then whether or not it cleared the bank with a wire transfer, an electronic transfer. That's not so much of a problem most of the time because the transfer is happening very quickly within a, a few days, uh, if not shorter than that. And therefore you don't have that outstanding kind of problem and therefore the bank feeds are often nice to use. Now notice that you also might have a system where you're using a credit card, same kind of thing, bank feed set up possibly, use the credit card and then you're paying some of your major expenses automatically with the credit card. You can use the bank feed to uh, enter those with a credit card thing, which will increase the credit card uh, liability as opposed to decreasing the checking account. Then the other option we have is to enter the bills as a bill increasing the accounts payable and then paying the bill. First thing we want to note is that the bill form is very specific. And this is where it's a little bit different. The terminology in the system, QuickBooks versus normal talking terminology differs even from accounting to the software. In accounting terminology, if I was talking about a bill, I might be talking about me billing somebody else, a customer. I might be talking about me receiving a bill that I'm simply going to pay off with a check. If there's a bill form in QuickBooks, that specifically means I'm going to enter something that's going to increase accounts payable. So in other words, I might get a bill from the telephone company and the bill might say invoice on it because from the telephone company side of things, they sent us an invoice. But to us, you know, we might use the term of bill, but you can use those terms kind of interchangeably. And then I might take that bill and not enter it as a bill into QuickBooks, but pay the bill with a check or expense form. Or I can take the bill or invoice and enter it as a bill form into the system, which specifically means accounts payable is going to go up. Now, most of the time people use this bills more as the business gets larger because it becomes more and more important to have a more strict time value of money kind of system set up. In other words, if you pay the utility bill today or you pay it 15 days from now, not a big deal. But if the utility bill was a lot of money, thousands of dollars, and or if you had thousands of transactions happening all the time, then that 15 days becomes a big deal for cash management strategy. And that's often when you, you start to manage, companies start to need to manage their accounts payable uh, more in depthly and have a whole accounts payable department managing the entering of the bill and deciding the latest point that they can pay the bills without being penalized and without pissing off the vendors because you don't want to make the business partners the people you're doing business mad so but that's what we're going to do we're going to enter the bills now in a similar fashion as we did last time uh, just to show the process we'll enter the bills increasing the accounts payable the other side go into an expense account typically and then we'll simply pay the bills which is kind of like using a check form or an expense form, but we can pay the bills all at one time with the pay bill form. That said, let's do it.